What's going on you guys? It's your boy Jesse Keller, the collecting nerd, and today I didn't think I would be uh, making a video at almost 2 o'clock in the morning, but as I was getting ready to go to bed, I saw uh, Noble Records' uh, new video about the uh, contest. I pretty much watched it for a bit, and I was like, okay, this sounds like a fun thing to enter. And, you know, I originally was going to comment it, my uh, answers, but since... Uh, it had to be via video, that's what I'm going to do, and I figured, you know, I'd better get the ball rolling before I can't, before I forget, basically, so, <laughs> hope you don't mind. Anyways, <clears throat> number one would have to be one of some of my best finds. Now, uh, some of the best finds in my record collection, I'm specifically referring to vinyl, even though I also uh, collect cassettes would uh, have to be, I'm going to pick four. I'm going to pick my promotional 45 of uh, Fortunate Son by uh, Credence Clearwater Revival. It's one of, my, uh, one of my favorite groups. So as soon as I got it, I didn't even know that it was a promo until I did a little bit uh, deeper researching. And... Second one would have to be my Monarch LP of the first Led Zeppelin album, which I don't have. Unfortunately, I don't have most of my records or a record player here, but hope that's all right with you. I don't want to keep saying that, but either, but anyways, the uh, third one would have to be my original first pressing of Master of Puppets. It has been... One of my grails since I started this collection, and it's actually the second most amount of money I ever spent on a record. $42, and the first one would have to be Metal Massacre 3, but another one, which is the uh, channel design or logo for uh, my channel, is uh, an Italian pressing of the first Motorhead album off of uh, Chiswick Records. And it's cool, it has the uncensored cover, and even though it's a little bit beat up, it doesn't skip, but it has that, you know, just that raw sound that Motorhead became known for. Uh, number two would have to be, number two, which is the uh, best song, greatest song ever contest. Now, this isn't necessarily, no wait, the best written song, my bad. Anyways, the reason why I'm saying this option is not because it's the uh, like most technical song ever or it has the best lyrics, but I think it's the uh, one of the most influential but uh, underrated songs of all time, and that'd have to be the uh, opening track off of the first Black Sabbath album, which is the same name, Black Sabbath, because it pretty much opened the floodgates for what would be known as heavy metal throughout the... Uh, 50 years that the genre has been ex in existence. Sorry for the crack. But, uh, third, which is how I keep track of my collections, is I use Discogs mainly to catalog the uh, records, tapes, and, you know, just the pressings I have. And it's also my way of doing a little research, but I also have a daily journal, which I keep track of how much I spend, you know, on what, so... If uh, I get a record on a certain day, I just write that down on that day's journal entry that I pretty much got that for a certain amount, what kind of pressing it was, all that good jazz. Uh, number four, one that I would probably never sell, and that would be the uh, first pressing of Master of Puppets that I just showed you. It's just one of my favorites, and if I had, like, Kill Em All, like an original Mega Force pressing of Kill 'em All, that'd also be just on a list of stuff I'd never sell. Number five, which is what is my favorite music related documentary, and I have two Metal a Headbangers Journey. I think it's uh, one of the only documentaries that actually talks into a, a decent amount of detail about you know the history of metal and how it just formed from the different uh, 
prototypes like Alice Cooper, Cream, and Blue Cheer up until the uh, black metal church burnings in Norway. And the uh, second one would have to be Last Days Here. And it's the story of uh, Bobby Liebling, who is a uh, founder of pioneering doom metal group uh, Pentagram. It's pretty much like a street version of Black Sabbath. And if you haven't heard it, heard their music, it's I highly recommend it. It's just fucking raw and mind-blowing at the same time. Now, one of the best gifts I ever got that's uh, record-related was an original Dark Side of the Moon with both posters. And they weren't and they uh, weren't like hung up or anything, but I, you're probably going to get mad, but I ended up paying them up just because, you know, I wanted my room to have like a badass feel to it. So I ended up hanging them up and, you know, I probably won't do that once I get my records back again, even though either way it doesn't really affect the value. It's still going to drop, but I still... It's not something that I regret either, but I shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> and last but not least, what is my ritual to listening to music? Now, I actually have two. It just sort of depends on my mood. If I'm in a good mood, what I'll do is I'll throw on a uh, record and set pretty loudly and just try and get my house clean, get anything I can organized, or get any projects I'm working on, whether it's uh, script writing for videos or uh, building model kits, or cleaning the house, even organizing uh, the Hot Wheels wall I'm currently working on. And if I'm in a bad mood, I'll just lay down, crack open an energy drink, and listen to music that way. Most likely with uh, headphones on, that way I could just drown my thoughts out. But I hope you're able to see this. I... Hope uh, my answers are good enough. I don't know how you guys, uh, I don't know how you pick out the uh, winners, but I still hope I win. This is uh, Jesse Kell, the Collecting Nerd, and I'm looking forward to uh, the winner of the giveaway. See you next time.